This is the second and final part of ALCA Tejas series. If you have not watched the first part, link is in description. All the Tejas variants will have the world-renowned 1S230mm Russian GSH-31 gun. The IAF has years of operational experience of using and maintaining this gun on all Russian aircraft including the Su-30 MKI. A large number of Indian and foreign armaments are planned to be integrated on the different Tejas variants. The choice of weapons is dictated by operational capability requirements and the existing large stocking for other fleets. The Mark I is planned to have the Russian S-8 rocket pods. The Air-2 air missile arm that could be integrated are R-73, IW AR, Python 5, ASRAAM, Astra Mark I and R-77. The long list of possible Air-2 surface missiles includes KH-59MA, KH-59L, KH-59T, AASM Hammer and the Brahmos NG ALCM. The integration may be selectively done. The indigenous Rudram-1 anti-radiation missile ARM is planned. The anti-ship missiles could be the Russian KH-35 and KH-59MK. The Precision Guided Munitions PGM options are the SPICE, Joint Direct Attack Munitions JDAM, HSLD, DRDO Glide Bombs, DRDO SAAW, Tactical Advance Range Augmentation Tara. The Laser Guided Bombs could be KAB-1500L, GBU-16 Paveway 2, Sudarshan or the Griffin LGB. The Cluster Munition RBK-500 and a variety of unguided bombs weigh from 100kg to 500kg. BDL Chaff Flare Counter Measure Dispensing System CMDS, Dare Targeting Port and Raphael Lightning 3 are also planned. The larger LCA Mark II will be able to carry a few larger armaments. The Micar and Meteor Missile are planned. So are future variants of Astra and NGCCM. Air 2 surface missiles could include Brahmos NG ALCM, LRLACM, Storm Shadow and Crystal Maze. CATS Alpha as part of MUMT would be integrated. Their Unified Electronic Warfare Suite UEWS, and Dual Color Missile Approach Warning System DCMAWS, are also planned. The first stage of Squadron No. 45 Squadron IAF Flying Daggers became operational in July 2016, at Sulur Air Force Station near Coimbatore. The 18 Squadron Flying Bullets was the second Tejas Mark I unit formed at Sulur on May 27, 2020. The Tejas Mark I made its international debut on January 21, 2016, at the 4th Bahrain International Air Show and in April 2018, the entire fleet of Tejas Mark I aircraft participated in the IAF major exercise called Gagan Shakti. The Tejas Mark I aircraft were deployed at forward bases for both air defense and precision strike roles. In 2019, six Tejas fighter jets participated in the Vayu Shakti air power demonstration where it demonstrated its swing roll capability. The squadron pilots are very happy with the Dash Evech MDS that enables slewing the high of both side close combat missiles such as Python 5 and R-73. Post Galwan skirmish on the line of actual control LAC in mid-August 2020, the number 45 squadron was tasked for its first operational deployment near the border. On April 27, 2021, Tejas Mark I successfully test-fired the Python 5 missile and also validated enhanced capability of a Derby Extended Range ARBVR missile. Both missiles scored direct hits on targets during the trial. The Naval LCA NLCA program began in 2003. The Naval prototype NP-1 was to be a two-seat and the NP-2 the single seat, both based on Tejas Mark I. Single-seat prototypes were to be based on the Tejas Mark II design. The NP-1 made its first flight in April 2012. It had a stronger landing gear to absorb the larger forces during carrier takeoff and arrested recovery. The Naval LCA had a nose droop to provide improved view for carrier landings. In addition to the 11s, the Naval LCA had wing leading edge vortex controllers Levcon, control surfaces that extend from the wing root leading edge which could be deflected to a downward angle or an upward angle to increase lift and reduce airspeed during approach. The first ski jump assisted takeoff from the shore based test facility SBTF at INS Hansa, Goa, was made in December 2014. The Naval variant has a distinctive flight control law mode which allows hands free takeoff. 
In December 2016, the Indian Navy opted out of the program because of technical reasons that included inadequate thrust weight ratio and preference for twin engine aircraft. But HAL and ADA continued the NLCA development. In 2019, the NLCA carried out the first arrested landing at the SBTF in daytime and later at night. In January 2020, the NLCA carried out its first arrested landing and ski jump assisted takeoff from the aircraft carrier INS Vikramaditya. In July 2020, the DRDO announced that the plan to develop the original LCA Mark II Navy had been dropped. India plans to export the Tejas for which HAL is in preliminary talks with several countries. HAL will give full service support including offer to set up logistic facilities. Indonesia, Malaysia, Sri Lanka and Vietnam are possible customers. Argentina has also indicated interest. In some cases, the Sinopark JF-17 is also a contender. Sales to Argentina have the complexity of UK imposed arms sanctions on the country. DLC uses British origin components including the aerial refueling probe and the quartz ray dome, both supplied by Cobham Limited as also the Martin Baker ejection seat. These issues are being resolved. Australia is looking for replacement of its Bayhawk 127 trainer fleet. HAL had offered the Tejas in its lead in fighter trainer lift configuration. Egypt also needs around 70 LCA to seater aircraft to replace its 100 Chinese made Hongdu JL8 trainers. In March 2019, the HAL Tejas made its international debut at the Langkawi International Maritime and Aerospace Exhibition Lima. Malaysia needs LCAS to augment their existing MiG-29 fighter fleet. In June 2021, Malaysia formally released a tender for the supply of 18 light combat aircraft as the fighter lead in trainer light combat aircraft fleet LCA. The request for proposal RFP has been issued for nine different contenders. In July 2022, HAL announced that Malaysia had picked the Tejas to replace its MiG-29 and the negotiations were in the final stage. Sri Lanka has shown interest in the Tejas to replace its aging fleets of IAI, Kefir and Chandu J-7 aircraft. But due to its financial state, it has postponed any such purchase. The United Arab Emirates had also evinced interest in 2018, but nothing has moved forward as on date. In December 2020, in response to a request for information RFI, from the United States Naval Air Systems Command Now Air, HAL offered the LCA as lift for their initiative to replace T-45 Goshawk trainer aircraft. The US is perhaps looking for an aircraft with slower landing speed. Now to conclude, the IAF continues to be at an all-time low of 30 fighter squadrons. The MiG-21 accidents and loss of crew lives have been seeing adverse public reaction. Operationally, both the western and northern borders are live with forces sitting eyeball to eyeball with adversaries. The security establishment is talking of a three-front war, two with China and one with Pakistan. China is pulling ahead in aerospace. Pakistan may also increase its squadron strength from current 19 to 22. Phasing out of the MiG Bison fleet has already been delayed a few times. The RFP for the acquisition of 114 new fighters that are to be imported has still not been sent out. The IAF urgently needs fighters, the production of the LCA must go up. The private sector must be brought in. India is the only country operating Jaguars. The Mirage 2000, Jaguar and MiG-29 combat aircraft will also start becoming due for replacement soon. The LCA Mark II will be a 4.5 generation fighter. The plan is to imbibe some fifth-generation technologies including limited stealth. The Tejas Mark II must match up to those timelines. The aircraft project management must get the national attention at the highest level. Time to act is now, or we get left far behind. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe.